First up, Adam and Jamie tackle the tall tale that ping pong can go lethally wrong. Really? A ping pong ball can kill you? That's the myth. There's no way it has enough mass to actually penetrate anything. 18 to nothing. But what if the ball was going really, really fast? Enough already! It's an interesting physical conundrum. Can such a delicate object with so little mass achieve ballistic lethality? Is it possible to fire plastic ping pong balls fast enough to result in mortal damage? Here's how this works. This is what I call a breech-loading pop gun. Here's the breech. There's the ammo. Seal it up. Pressurize from here. Open it up. Point it in the direction you want to hit with a ping pong ball. Release with this high pressure valve. And Bob's your uncle. What does Bob's your uncle mean? Well, it means hopefully that we've gotten the ping pong ball to an impossibly large speed. And with the pressure pumped to the max the pop gun can handle, a modest 95 PSI in three. We're about to find what? out. 140 miles per hour. Nice for a little device like that. There we go. <laughs> it's not lethal, though. We've got a long ways to go before we get to that point. Yep, as Brody would say, they're going to need a bigger barrel. Our paddle's got the ping pong balls to about 70 miles an hour. My little shooter here, up to 140. Wait a second, editors, can you give me a nice shotgun sound effect for this? Much better. Got the ping pong ball up to 140 miles an hour at 100 PSI. What? You know, for years, Jamie's going to be like, ah, oh, crap, there's another damn ping pong ball in the rafters. Jamie's in my experience. PSI is not the deciding factor for acceleration in an air cannon. It's barrel length. So I think what we need to do is build another one of these with a really, really long barrel. <laughs> well, as long as the pressure behind the ball is greater than the pressure in front of the ball, the ball's going to continue to accelerate. It's perfect. And so the longer the barrel we have, the more time the ball will have to do that, and the faster it'll be going when it comes out the far end. There's the target. And with a pop gun pressurized to the max the shop air can supply. OK, that's 140 PSI. It's time to load. These are some professional grade ping pong balls. And lock. Close the breech. And let rip. Range is hot. Firing in three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> I just see a hole at the other end. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. That is far out. That's a fast little ping pong ball. Wow. <laughs> well, our 80 foot long barrel sent this ping pong ball through an inch thick piece of honeycomb cardboard, which in and of itself is not that incredible a feat, but it left a visible mark on three quarter inch plywood. That is something more than I expected. It certainly banged up the backboard. But what about the crunch numbers? 453 miles per hour. That's a good place to start. Absolutely. So we got this ball going 453 miles per hour. That's really fast, but I have to say, I don't think it's lethal. You know, based on what I'm seeing with this ball, it might break a rib, it might give you a really nasty bruise, but it's not going to kill you. However, the damage done was 10 feet from the muzzle. And the air resistance over that distance is significant for such a lightweight object. So what would happen if the target, say a glass of wine, cheers, was much closer to the barrel? Ammunition. We're going to fire our ping pong ball at a few different types of objects to see what it does. Range is hot on your call. You never know what you'll find out. Three, two, one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was really lovely from here. The sound of broken glass, the cloud of red liquid, it was deeply satisfying. But what does it tell us about the power of ping pong? So what does 453 miles per hour mean to your average glass full of wine? Wow. 
Now, before the ping pong ball gets anywhere close to the glass, the air in front of it has to escape from the barrel, and that's what's happening here. That air is escaping at probably something approaching 453 miles per hour, and it's starting to peel the liquid out of the glass. That's the Bernoulli effect. Look at that, that is far out. It's like it's boiling, it's like it's on fire. The glass is half empty at this point, and the ping pong ball still hasn't shown up to the party. Oh, I think bad things are about to happen. Now when the ping pong ball shows up and it touches the glass, everything shatters. But notice that the ping pong ball's mass is still so light, it doesn't actually go through the glass, it actually bounces off the liquid of the wine that's still remaining in the glass. That is a beautiful shot. Beautiful, but not nearly lethal. It deflects rather than penetrates. So to make a mortal mark, they're going to need more speed, more momentum, and a step into the unknown. This has never been done before. It's scary. Here we go. Whoa! Holy <laughs> Oh, man. That was really good. <laughs> I didn't expect it to work that well. The three-foot prototype worked scarily well. Popping the sealed vacuum caused a sudden influx of air, and the pressure differential sends the ball rocketing. And after a few technique tweaks... One. One. ...and a doubled barrel length... One. Adam measures wow. rocketing at... 375 miles an hour. That is mighty respectable. Respectable enough to be the new ping pong projectile power of choice. Well, the vacuum trick for launching a ping pong ball out of a short length of tubing is working gangbusters. I actually got 375 miles an hour on a ping pong ball out of this measly six foot tube. That is awesome. And this is where I'm going to concentrate my energy to get the fastest ping pong ball possible. All right, we're ready. Based on the theory that bigger barrels are better, <laughs> it's taking a little longer to pump this out. Yeah. The guys have rigged the vacuum pump to their enormous 80-footer. There's plenty of nerves. This has never been done before. It's scary. High expectations. Here's a world first. And energy waiting to fulfill its potential. Ping pong bazooka in three, two, one. But it's an unexpected and disappointing dud. <laughs> That's no good. Here's our ping pong ball. That wall is where we want the ping pong ball to be embedded in. One. Something's not working. But it's reaching close to the end of our tube and then somehow bouncing back a little. Well, not somehow. Uh, see, air rushes in this tube behind the ping pong ball. There's vacuum in front of it, but that air sneaks past the ping pong ball and it looks like it's providing a cushion that's actually causing it to spring back once it reaches the end. So it's not attaining enough speed or momentum to bust out. One. Nope. Didn't make it. It tells me that we've made this tube too long. Yep, that cushion of air decelerates the ball to the point that it doesn't have the force to pop the packing tape. So, as Brody wouldn't say, they need a shorter barrel. Question is, how short? We're gonna use the high-speed camera to find out where the ping pong ball is no longer accelerating. Then we're gonna cut the barrel there and hope that that works. All right, speed test, here we go. Three, two, one. Several tests. And sums later, <laughs> one. they find the ball maxes out 30 feet along the barrel at an astonishing velocity. 829. We're well past Mach 1 here. So a quick reset at the requisite length. <gasps> Boy, was that tough. And the guys are expecting. Let's do it. <laughs> the ball to bust out of the packing tape at over 800 miles per hour. What? That would be a supersonic ping pong ball. Sounded fast, but who knows what that meant. What it means is 275 miles per hour. We're getting less out of a 30-foot barrel than I was out of a six-foot barrel. Yeah. A frustrating miscalculation. What the f 
It's only coming out of the barrel at 192 miles per hour. The shorter barrel means the ball is now accelerating enough that it can burst free. But the air cushion is still an issue. Failure is apparently the only option. With this new piece of tech, Adam's bringing a little rocket science to the ping pong party. And to understand what it is and if it works, Adam's first testing a short barrel prototype. Part of this rig is very familiar, but the addition of the choke. Oh, kidding. After I pull a vacuum, I'll put this on here, thus making this a sealed pressure chamber behind the barrel. Vacuumizing. When I feel like I've got a full vacuum, I then hook shop air pressure up into this, and the extra 40 to 60 to 80 PSI that comes out of here will burst this piece of tape, sending everything going, supposedly, much, much faster. I really hope this works. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh, oh. Wow, wow. The blast of pressurized air popped the vacuum and added extra energy to the equation. But just how much? 779 miles per hour. Mama. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. What Adam's talking about is that after all their hard work, they have a ping pong ball faster than the speed of sound. That's quicker than this. And this. So where next from here? So this is now a working proof of concept. We found out about this technology of adding a choke, like, like, like rocket science. Rocket science uses a choke to make jets and rockets work, and we put it here with some pressure behind it, and we got 779 miles per hour. So now we're going to go to a bigger location. And what a location. Don't you wish this could be our shop? Boy, do I. Here at fabulous Fort Mason, Adam and Jamie will definitively answer the question, how fast can a table tennis ball fly? One down. And then test its lethality by supersizing their prototype ping pong pop gun barrel. And that's the last one. And the pressurized choke chamber. Back in the shop, they've used less than 100 PSI to pop the packing tape vacuum. Now. They're ramping it up to 500. Ready? Ish. And they want to deliver that massive blast. I hope you don't break my arm. Fast. I think that was pretty good. I think that was pretty good. And with the big beast hooked up and ready for action, here's how it's going to go down. The setup out here should be pretty familiar to anyone who's been watching thus far except for the fact that the barrel's 150 feet long. Behind our vacuum tube, of course, is our pressure chamber and pressure to 500 pounds per square inch of pressure. The whole business is activated by this lever, which we will set off with this. And so with the air evacuated from the barrel and the choke ready to charge, Jamie steps up to the plate. Here we go, 500 PSI, 150 foot long barrel in three, two, one, do it. <laughs> It is like a magic trick here. I was looking at the ping pong ball, and then it just wasn't there. Do it! <laughs> it wasn't even like I had a sensation of it moving. It just, just whisked out of existence. Which bodes well ballistically until the evidence is found. <laughs> There's very little of the ping pong ball left. And then examined on the high speed. It's not even left the barrel, and it's totally shattered. That's a bit of a problem. The problem being they need the full weight of an aerodynamic intact ball for maximum mortal damage. The good news is it was going at a speed of 1,086 miles per hour. <laughs> That's pretty fast. That is pretty fast. Even though our ping pong ball was going at Mach 1.4, which is amazing, I can't say that that was successful because it wasn't a ping pong ball when it left the barrel. So we are going to cut this barrel at 20 feet. We're going to lower the overall pressure. Here we go. 20 foot barrel, 300 PSI, semi slow release. We're not sure what's going to happen. Three, but whatever does ought to really help inform us about what's going on. Two, so here we go. One, go. 
<laughs> that was an ever-loving smack of a bang. That was a hell of a bang, and that ball is rolling. The ball is intact. Wow. Intact and insane. Confirmed on the high speed at a world record 1,100 miles an hour, the delicate 2.7 gram ping pong ball is traveling twice as fast as a jumbo jet. As fast as a speeding bullet. Now we are talking. We went from 150 foot barrel to a 20 foot barrel with 300 PSI behind it. Now it's time to find out if the 1100 miles per hour we got out of the end of that barrel, I think we're ready. It's in fact lethal, lethal balls. That's what we're looking for. A ping pong ball going 1100 miles per hour. Go. Versus flesh. Which one's gonna win? We're about to find out. For our lethality test, today's human analog will be played by a pork shoulder, otherwise known as a pork butt, because pork has four shoulders, and two of them are butts. It's true, look it up. Question is, will the world record-breaking ball bounce harmlessly off the butt or penetrate with lethal force? Time to turn some potential energy into some actual energy. You ready? I'm ready. OK. Short barrel, 300 PSI, lethality test with a pork butt in three, two, one, go. Whoa! <laughs> that was a blast. Literally. <laughs> but how did our poor sign pal fare? All right, let's look at the damage. Ooh. Dude. There's like flesh trauma going down an inch and a half into here. That's impressive. I'm shocked by how much damage it did. Now that thing actually penetrated. That would hurt. But I think we still need to call that this is a non-lethal hit. It did not penetrate all the way through the flesh or leave some gaping wound. And barring some lucky hit, that is not a deadly hit. This is a substantial flesh wound, but it ain't lethal. Yep, despite the extreme air pressure and a supersonic ball making the pig fly, the impact did not mortally harm the hound. 